she was a member of the church when she wrote the book, and after she was done writing the book, uh, it was published, they excommunicated her. But that was an interesting, it, what she went through and documented all the stuff in the early church history of what had actually happened and stuff. And so I went through a few of those things, and I decided, you know, that wasn't for me either. And, and so I was kind of just there. I just, during this time, I was somehow on a job I was working on. Somebody had, had a Christian station on, and I was, and Alistair Begg came on. And so I listened to, listened to that, you know, and my whole time being a Mormon, I never heard anybody preach like that. I never heard anybody read two or three script verses out of the Bible and then take a half an hour, an hour, and talk about that. And it was really quite an interesting thing to me at that time. And so I listened to that a little bit. And uh, I remember, you know, praying and said, God, you know, I just, I just, my life, I don't feel is right before you. And I just ask that you change it. But I wasn't searching. I wasn't seeking. I was happy with where I was at. And uh, that's kind of where I was at. And it's, God's grace is amazing. On that, I know there's, Everybody has a story on how they were saved and stuff, and, and everybody's story is different. And praise God that everybody's different and that he works through people where they're at. But on the 7th of July, four years ago, God saved me. I woke up and there was something different in my life. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you other than all of a sudden I wanted him. And I, uh, up to this point, I, I was addicted to pornography. I love pornography. I could feel it destroy my soul. But I had no desire to leave. And on that day that he saved me, he freed me from that addiction. And I no longer was addicted to that. And, and I, a few days went by. And as, as a Mormon, you have spiritual experiences. But they're kind of a, a fleeting thing. And it's mostly, it seemed to me, you're maintained by how much you can do to keep that momentum going. And, and so you, I, then that was my background. So I thought, well, you know, I don't know what is going to happen with this. And so I... I waited a few days and I called up Rich and I said, I, I need to go talk to your pastor. He says, well, well Kelly's gone, but Glenn's down there and he's doing it. And I said, well, I need to talk to him. So he gave me, he says, what's wrong? I said, well, God's just doing something in my life and I just want to talk to somebody. And so I called up Glenn and he says, yeah, he'd meet me. And, and so him and Mike came to church and I just says, you know, I, I kind of gave him a history of what was going on in my life and where I was at. And I said, you know, God's doing something in my life and I don't know what it is that I... And they, I said, you know, I, we, the, the church is, uh, the Mormon church claims to believe in the, the King James Version. And it's kind of a hard, for me it was a hard read. I just kind of had a hard time with that 16th century, you know, old English and stuff. And so the, this is the Bible Ben gave me on that day we met. And he prayed over me and I, I don't know what he thought was going to happen. But uh, the next Sunday I didn't come to church. Uh, my wife had a cleaning job. And. And I, I helped her clean, and I says, I told her, I says, you know, I'll help you clean before church or after church, but I'm going to church now. And uh, and it's just been, God has done that in my life. He's He's given me a love for His Word. I remember <coughs> a couple of verses that kind of stuck out to me. One was in when I was, you know, here I thought I was a good person, and and in Revelations three seven it says, for you say I am rich. I have prospered and I need nothing, and that was me. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. And that's where I was at. I had, I was dead in my sins and trespasses, as Paul says in uh, Ephesians. And God came and gave me new life. He, uh, let's see, another one, another one that really jumped out at me was uh, in Romans 10, 20, it says, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. And that, that pretty much de describes my life to a T that God, he pursued after me. I've always kind of, I looked back on it for a while and said, well, where did, you know, did I have to come out of Mormonism before he saved me or what? You know, I'm, I'm coming to the fact is that he pursued after me and he found me. Um, let's see if there's another one here. This has been a, a pretty powerful one of my life. It said that in... Ezekiel, uh, chapter 36, 22. Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name. So what he did was for his name. And it says in uh, 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. And from all your uncleanliness, and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart, 
and I'll give you a new spirit. This is interesting to me because I had always been raised that it was me who did stuff, but now all of a sudden, he's the one that's doing all of the work in me. It says, and I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and heart of stone from your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statues and to be careful to obey my rules. And one more here in Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah 31, 33 says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer each shall teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember them no more. And that was huge for me. Um, another one here in Jeremiah 32, 40 says, I will make with them an everlasting covenant, and I will not turn away from doing good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts, that they may not turn from me, and I will rejoice in doing them good. And I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all of my heart and all my soul. And it just goes to show the God that the Bible teaches and who he is and, and what he, he does. I, I think uh, probably the biggest thing from my Mormon experience to where I'm at now is who God is. I think the Mormons teach that uh, God was once a man who gradually progressed and became a God. So basically I was worshiping a man-made God in my Mormon faith. And he was bound by my free agency. He could not do anything without my permission, without, uh, I remember hearing, going to meetings and they said, you know, God has this work for us to do and he can't do what he needs to do until we get what we need to do done. And it was just, the God that I serve now, he is able to save. He is able to keep saved. It says in John that whoever the Father gives to the Son, the Son will by no means lose. And I, I'm here today because God has kept me here. And there is no other reason that I'm here. I, I, it's hard um, to be the only one in my family who comes, but God has done that work in my life. He's done. He's changed my heart, and now that's what I want. I just want Him, and uh, and I trust in Him to do what He'll what He'll do through me. I, uh, last one more story, I guess. Last fall, I went through a really dark time in my life. Um, to a point that I, I couldn't eat. I was losing weight. I was there was a lot of turmoil in my job, a lot of turmoil at home. And I was just I was just broken. I mean I had I had nothing. And uh, it was an interesting thing because if I would have been before I would have just said, I'm done. I'm not gonna deal with this. But it was the way that God works in us is amazing. I mean it was one of those things that it was more like he he just put me on the floor before him and and I'd still I couldn't find him, and I desired, I desired that, uh, that fellowship, and I just, it was just one of those things that I couldn't, I couldn't find him, and I, there's a few of the guys in church I called, and I said, you need to pray for me, because I am really, I'm really broken right now, and, and the prayers, I, I hear a lot of people say, well, we, we like to, to get close to God out in the mountains, or we like to do it in nature, or whatever, and, and I feel sorry for those people, because you need to be in a body. You need to be somewhere where people can strengthen you when you go through hard times. And, and uh, you know, I, sometimes I, I misplace my Bible and it kind of freaks me out in the word and all that I put it. And looking back on this time, I, I thought, I, I think I've lost my shield of faith. <laughs> I can't find it, you know. But uh, God was gracious enough that he took me to, to Second Chronicles. I was just going through the Bible and my hand just kind of came here. And so I wanted to share this story a little bit with you. And there's a couple of things and I'll be done. But it says, it was Jehoshaphat was the king of, of Judah at the time. And it says, there was a report brought to him that all these enemies were coming up against him. And it says, and Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord for all the cities that Judah had come to seek the Lord. And it says, uh, that was verse 3 and verse uh, 12, it says, 
For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us, for we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Thus says the Lord to you, do not, and I'm just kind of jumping around, but do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God. And that, that spoke peace to my heart, because here I was feeling like, and he says, don't worry about it. He says, I'll take care of this to me. For you do, you, do, you, you do not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. And then over here it says, uh, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe in his prophets, and you will, be, and you will succeed. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and to praise him in holy attire as they went before the army and say, Give thanks to the Lord, for his steadfast love endures forever. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. For the men of Ammon and Moab rose against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, devoting them to destruction. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they all helped help to destroy one another. And uh, that's just, I don't know, there's, I've, I found in my walk with God that as I, as I come, across, come, uh, come across the questions and things that I, I seek, that He is faithful to guide me to answers. I, when I first was saved, I, I, uh, yeah, just to kind of give you a little, uh, history of what happened, he, he gave me, he led me to Christian music, and I never heard Christian music before, but there was something that I started, when I started listening to that, it was, it was sad, it was, it just fed my soul, and, and so I listened to Christian music for that, and it's amazing, I'd be working, and all of a sudden I just start crying because of the words and the songs and what they had meant to me, and, and I, uh, I have to say this about Glenn, I like met with Glenn and Mike, I just come from Mormonism where you're taught to trust the leaders and, and the people, and I, came and you know I thought to I'm gonna watch this guy you know <laughs> I gotta hold him to the Bible you know I'm not gonna do that anymore. And once I started reading I found out just how ignorant I was and how I don't I didn't know anything. I knew a couple stories but but my whole that has all changed to the point that now I, I pray for Glenn all the time because he needs that prayer. He needs that he needs to be lifted up to God that he might fulfill what he's been called to do. And now it's more I, I yearn after my brother and, and desire that he'll be faithful to what God's asked him to do. Um, so I, I listened to Christian music for a while and, and all this time I was reading the Bible. I mean, the Bible came alive to me. All of a sudden, I could see things that I could never see before and, and I, you know, I could hear. It's like when he says, you know, until God gives you eyes to see and ears to hear, you don't know. You, you cannot see the kingdom and neither will you enter it. And, and I... So I listened to Alistair Begg, because that's what I listened to. And so, you know, I listened to everything I could find on him. and then, But I was leery. I didn't know who to, I could listen to. I mean, there's so many people out there. Who do I listen to? Who do I go to to, to get fed? And uh, so I thought, and I was, I was afraid. I mean, I just listened. I just come from a religion where everything that I thought was right and all was a lie. And so I, I'd seen, uh, so I watched a, I think it was a conference that he was in. So I seen somebody of uh, the other guys that were in the conference, and I thought, well, if he's associated with those people, I probably could trust. And, and that's an important thing, I think, especially among the Christian family, that you want to associate with good believers because there's people that look up and see. You don't want to to take them to a place with, that is their, uh, you know, that they can be led astray. And the only way to not be led astray is to learn this and to study the Bible and, to, and be rooted in that. I, Otherwise, you won't know. But so I went from I think from Alistair Bay I went to uh, I think it was uh, John MacArthur. So I listened to John MacArthur, and I went from John MacArthur to uh, um, yeah, R.C. Sproul, and I listened to a bunch of what he had to say, and then I went to uh, and then I listened to a bunch of John Piper, and then I found some other places that had given me uh, you know just preachers that just have little churches, but some of the sermons that they give are just. <coughs> They're just totally amazing. Um, let's see, is there something else I forgot? Oh, yeah. I also, uh, I really enjoyed, and I, and I read the stories before when I was in Mormon, but I, of uh, 
George Mueller. And so I got George Mueller again, and I, and I went to that book I actually have uh, on my phone, and I can just listen to him and uh, Hudson Taylor, and, and the way that they trusted in God. And that's, that's what I want. I want my faith to be rested in God. And those stories help because the God of the Bible is the same for everybody. He's not a respecter of persons. If you go to him, as they went to him, he will be faithful to, uh, to care for you and to, uh, to answer. I just, uh, so I, that's kind of where I've been. That's where I've gone. I just, you know, prayer has been a, a oh, one more thing that, so I listened to Oscar Begg before I, I was born again. And, and he says that he would go, his family would go on a trip and his dad and they'd go to the town to, for a vacation and they so, and they were looking for a church to go to. And, uh, and Alistair said, well, he asked his dad, well, where, how do you know what church to go to? And he says, well, you want a church that the pastor preaches from the Bible and that they have a prayer meeting once a week. And, uh, and so when I came here, we have a pastor that preaches from the Bible and we have a prayer meeting. And says, well, this is a good enough church for me. And he's telling me, God stuck me. God stuck me here, you know, and I'm happy. I just love my family that I have here. I love each of you guys so much. And, for your putting up with me, and uh, you know, it's just God uh, gives us a, a new family in Christ. It's just uh, it's amazing. I, I hear a lot. I've I've heard a lot of stories from. There's a lot of actually quite a few people from from my the people in Pinesville that have come to faith in Christ. And there's nothing better than to hear somebody who's found Christ. And uh, I just praise God for that. I praise that He's moving. Like I haven't seen before, you know, and I pray that he'll continue to do that. And, and I just, uh, I'm thankful that he hears and answers prayers. And I just bless you guys. Thank God for.